Welcome to Story Learn. I'm Glinda, and I'm excited to be your guide on this amazing adventure. At Story Learn, we think every story is a special way to learn English. You get to go on exciting trips through the stories of some very famous people. Today, we're going to learn about Albert Einstein. By listening to his story, you'll get better at English and also learn about a very smart person. If the video is too fast for you, no worries. You can make it slower. This helps you understand every word better. Are you ready to begin? Let's go on this journey with Story Learn. Learning English will be fun and full of interesting stories. Let's get started. Chapter 1 Who was Albert Einstein? Albert Einstein was a famous scientist from Germany. He was really good at math and science, especially in understanding how things move and how light works. He came up with big ideas called the special and general theories of relativity. These ideas changed how we think about space, time, and gravity. In 1921, he got a very important award called the Nobel Prize in Physics because he explained something tricky about light called the photoelectric effect. Later on, he had to move to the United States because a group in Germany, known as the Nazi Party, didn't like him. His science also helped people learn more about how to make energy from atoms, which is a big deal even today. When he got older, he tried to figure out a way to explain all of nature's forces in one big idea. He passed away in April 1955 when he was 76 years old. Einstein loved asking questions and discovering new things. Because of this, many people think he was the most important scientist of the 20th century. Chapter 2 Early Life, Family, and Education Albert Einstein was born on March 14, 1879, in a place called Ulm in Germany. He was part of a Jewish family that didn't follow religious practices very strictly. His dad, Hermann Einstein, sold things and also designed things as an engineer. He started a company in Munich that made electrical stuff. Albert's mom, named Pauline Koch, took care of their home. He had a younger sister named Maya. Albert went to a school called Luitpold Gymnasium in Munich. He didn't really like it there because the teachers were very strict, and he had to learn in ways he didn't enjoy. He also found speaking difficult when he was young. But he loved music and playing the violin, something he kept loving as he grew up. Since he was little, Albert always wanted to learn and understand the world around him. A family friend, Max Talmud, who was studying to be a doctor, would eat with Albert's family sometimes. He helped Albert learn by showing him a science book for kids. This book made Albert start thinking deeply about light. When he was still a teenager, Albert wrote his first important science paper about something called ether and magnets. In the 1890s, Albert's family moved to Milan, Italy, because his dad's business was not doing well. Albert stayed behind in Munich at a boarding house to finish school. When it was time for him to do military service, he left school saying he was too tired and sick, which was a way to avoid joining. His parents were worried about him not finishing school and avoiding the military, but they let him come to Italy with them. Albert managed to get into a college in Zurich, Switzerland, because he was really good at math and physics. But first, he had to finish high school, so he went to a high school in Aarau, Switzerland. There, he stayed with the headmaster's family and fell in love with the headmaster's daughter, Marie. Later, Albert decided he didn't want to be German anymore and became a Swiss citizen at the start of the 1900s. 
Chapter 3 Einstein's IQ People think Albert Einstein was very smart, with an IQ, a score that measures intelligence, around 160. But no one really knows his exact IQ because he never took an IQ test. A man named David Wexler made the first IQ test called The Ways in 1955, which was right before Einstein passed away. The highest score you can get on the test now is 160. If someone scores 135 or more, it means they are in the top 1% of smart people. A woman named Marilyn Vosavant had the highest IQ ever recorded, 228, and was even in the Guinness Book of World Records in the 1980s. But then, Guinness stopped including IQ records because people couldn't agree on if the tests were right. Some people think there were others, like Leonardo da Vinci, Marie Curie, Nikola Tesla, and Nicholas Copernicus, who were smarter than Einstein. Chapter 4 Patent Clerk After finishing college, Einstein had a hard time finding a job as a teacher because he preferred studying on his own instead of going to class which made some of his teachers unhappy. In 1902, thanks to someone's recommendation, Einstein got a job at a patent office in Switzerland. This job wasn't about teaching or researching, but it was about checking people's inventions. While he was working there, he had enough free time to think deeply about ideas he had started exploring in college. These ideas led to what we now call the Principle of Relativity. The year 1905 was a very special year for Einstein. He wrote four important scientific papers and published them in a famous science journal. Two of these papers talked about the photoelectric effect, how light can create electricity, and Brownian motion, how tiny particles in liquid move around. The other two introduced E equals mc squared, a formula that explains how matter and energy are related, and the special theory of relativity, how time and space can change. These works were very important for Einstein's career and changed the way people understand physics. Chapter 5 Theory of Relativity In 1905, Einstein introduced a big idea called the Special Theory of Relativity in a scientific paper. This theory changed how people think about physics. It explained that space, where we move, and time, how long things take, are connected to each other in something called space-time. By 1915, Einstein had developed this idea into the general theory of relativity. This new theory explained how gravity, the force that makes things fall to the ground, relates to space-time. Einstein was really proud of this theory because it helped predict how planets move around the sun better than the old ideas from Isaac Newton. It also explained gravity in a more detailed way. British astronomers Sir Frank Dyson and Sir Arthur Eddington proved Einstein's theory during a solar eclipse in 1919. They observed stars and showed that Einstein was right, making him famous worldwide. His theories are now used in technology like GPS, which helps us find our way. However, Einstein made a mistake in his general theory. He thought the universe didn't change its size, but his math showed it could be getting bigger or smaller. He didn't believe his own results at first, and added something called a cosmological constant to fix it. Later, he realized he should have trusted his original findings. Astronomer Edwin Hubble found out that the universe is actually getting bigger, and he met with Einstein in 1931 to discuss it. Years after Einstein died, 
in 2018, scientists confirmed another part of his theory. They watched a star move close to a black hole and saw its light stretch out because of the black hole's strong gravity. This made the star look like it was changing color from blue to red as it sped up and tried to escape the pull of the black hole. This experiment showed that Einstein's ideas about gravity were correct. Chapter 6 Einstein's Equation In 1905, Einstein wrote about how matter, stuff everything is made of, and energy, the force that makes things move or change, are connected. He gave us a special formula, E equals mc squared. This means the energy, E, of something is equal to its mass, m times the speed of light, c, multiplied by itself. This formula showed that even small amounts of matter could be turned into a lot of energy, which led to the creation of atomic power. A famous scientist named Max Planck agreed with Einstein's ideas, which made Einstein very popular. He was invited to give talks and held important jobs, like being the head of the Kaiser Wilhelm Institute for Physics, which is now called the Max Planck Institute for Physics, from 1917 to 1933. In 1921, Einstein received the Nobel Prize in Physics not for his work on relativity, since some people were still unsure about it, but for explaining the photoelectric effect, how light can make electricity. There was a delay in giving him the prize until 1922 because of some official rules. Even when he accepted the prize, he chose to talk about his relativity theory. Chapter 7 Wives and Children Einstein got married to Mileva Maric on January 6, 1903. They met in Zurich while they were both studying. Einstein liked Maric, who was from Serbia and also studied physics. However, Einstein's parents did not want him to be with her because she was from a different ethnic background. Despite this, Einstein kept meeting her, and they would write letters to each other sharing thoughts, including Einstein's scientific ideas. After Einstein's father died in 1902, he and Marek got married. They had three children. Their first child, a daughter named Liesel, was born before they got married in 1902, and it's not clear what happened to her. She might have been raised by Marek's family or given to another family. They also had two sons. Hans Albert Einstein, who grew up to be a famous engineer, and Eduard Tete Einstein, who had a mental health condition called schizophrenia when he was young. Einstein's marriage to Marek was not happy, and they decided to end it in 1919. The breakup was hard for Marek. As part of their agreement when they split up, Einstein said Marek could have the money if he ever won the Nobel Prize. While still married to Marek, Einstein started a relationship with Elsa Lowenthal, who was his cousin. They got married in 1919, the same year he divorced Marek. Einstein was not faithful to Elsa and saw other women during their marriage, which lasted until Elsa died in 1936. Chapter 8 Travel Diaries In his 40s, Einstein traveled a lot and wrote about what he saw and thought in a journal. His honest thoughts from these travels are in two books called The Travel Diaries of Albert Einstein. The first book, which came out in 2018, talks about his travels for almost six months to Asia, Palestine, and Spain. He started his trip to Japan from Marseille, France, in the fall of 1922, with his second wife, Elsa. Their journey took them through the Suez Canal to places like Sri Lanka, Singapore, Hong Kong, Shanghai, and then to Japan. 
they went back to Germany through Palestine and Spain in March 1923. The second book, published in 2023, is about three months he spent giving talks and traveling in Argentina, Uruguay, and Brazil in 1925. In these diaries, Einstein wrote his honest thoughts about the people he met, including people from China, Sri Lanka, and Argentina. These comments are surprising because later in his life, Einstein spoke strongly against racism. For example, in November 1922, he wrote about people in Hong Kong saying they were hardworking, dirty, and lazy. Chapter 9 Becoming a U.S. Citizen In 1933, Einstein started a new job at the Institute for Advanced Study in Princeton, New Jersey. He planned to stay there for the rest of his life. During this time in Germany, a group called the Nazis, led by a man named Adolf Hitler, was becoming very powerful. They used hate and lies to gain control, especially since Germany was struggling after World War I. The Nazis didn't like Einstein's science, calling it Jewish physics, and they didn't let Jewish people have jobs at universities or in government. They even wanted to harm Einstein. Because of the danger, Einstein and other scientists from Europe moved to the United States, worrying that the Nazis might build a very dangerous weapon, an atomic bomb. Soon after he moved and started his work in the U.S., Einstein really liked the way people in America were free to think and work based on their abilities, very different from what he had experienced growing up. In 1935, he was allowed to stay in the U.S. forever and became an American citizen five years later. In the U.S., Einstein focused on trying to find a single theory that would explain all the different rules of physics. But during World War II, he helped design weapons for the Navy and raised a lot of money for the military by selling his famous writings. Chapter 10 Einstein and the Atomic Bomb In 1939, Einstein and another scientist named Leo Szilard wrote a letter to the President of the United States, Franklin D. Roosevelt. They warned him that the Nazis in Germany might be able to build a very powerful bomb and suggested that the United States should start making their own nuclear weapons to be safe. The United States later started a big project called the Manhattan Project to develop these nuclear weapons. But Einstein didn't help directly because he believed in peace and didn't like the idea of war. Also, the FBI and its boss, J. Edgar Hoover, didn't trust Einstein, and in 1940, the military said Einstein couldn't be part of the project. This meant the main scientists working on the bomb couldn't talk to Einstein about their work. Einstein didn't know that the United States would use atomic bombs in Japan in 1945. When he found out about the bombing of Hiroshima, he was very shocked and said, Oh! The world is not ready for it. After the war, Einstein worked hard to make sure that atomic bombs were not used again. He and Szilard started a group called the Emergency Committee of Atomic Scientists. In 1947, Einstein wrote an article suggesting that the world should use nuclear weapons only as a way to prevent wars, not to fight them, and he thought the United Nations could help manage this. Chapter 11 Time Travel and Quantum Theory After World War II ended, Einstein kept working on a big idea he had been thinking about for a long time, trying to connect different rules of physics into one big idea. He also thought a lot about some very interesting things like time travel, wormholes, which are like shortcuts through space, black holes, places in space where gravity pulls so much that even light cannot get out, and how the universe started. But during this time, 
Most of the other scientists were very interested in something called quantum theory, which is a way of understanding how very small particles like atoms behave. Einstein felt quite alone because he didn't focus on quantum theory much. In the last ten years of his life, he became even more of a loner, staying near Princeton, where he worked. He liked to spend his time thinking deeply, about his ideas and talking with a few colleagues. Chapter 12 Personal Life In the late 1940s, Einstein joined a group called the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, NAACP. He saw that the way black people were treated in the United States was similar to how Jews were treated in Germany. He became friends with W.E.B. Du Bois, who worked for black people's rights, and Paul Robeson, a famous singer and actor. Einstein also spoke out for equal rights and once called racism a disease during a speech at Lincoln University in 1946. Einstein cared a lot about getting enough sleep. He believed he needed 10 hours of sleep each night to do his best work. He even thought that the idea for his theory of relativity came to him in a dream about cows. He liked to take short naps during the day, too. He had a trick for not sleeping too deeply. He held something like a spoon or a pencil. If he dropped it, the noise would wake him up, helping him remember his dreams better, which he thought could make him more creative. Even though sleep was important to him, wearing socks was not. Einstein didn't like socks and said his big toe always made holes in them, so he stopped wearing them altogether. One of the most famous pictures of Einstein is of him sticking out his tongue. This happened on his 72nd birthday, on March 14, 1951. When leaving his birthday party at Princeton, lots of reporters wanted him to smile for the camera, but he was tired of smiling. So instead, he stuck out his tongue at them. A photographer named Arthur Sassa took this photo. Einstein found the picture funny and liked it so much that he ordered several copies to give to his friends. He even signed one of the photos, which was sold for $125,000 at an auction in 2017. Chapter 13 Death and Final Words Einstein passed away on April 18, 1955, when he was 76 years old. He was in the University Medical Center at Princeton. The day before he died, Einstein felt very sick while he was writing a speech to celebrate the seventh anniversary of Israel. He had a very serious health problem called an abdominal aortic aneurysm. He was taken to the hospital, but he didn't want any surgery. Einstein believed he had lived a full life and was ready for what was next. He said, I want to leave when I decide. It's not good to keep living with the help of machines. I've done my part, and now it's time to go. I will do this gracefully. Right before he died, Einstein said some words in German, but the nurse there didn't understand German, so no one knows what his last words were. A news magazine called Life had a photographer named Ralph Morse who heard about Einstein's death. Morse went to Einstein's office, hoping to take pictures. He got into the office by giving the building manager some alcohol, and he took photos of the office exactly how Einstein left it. After the doctors examined Einstein's body, it was taken to a funeral home in Princeton. Then, it was moved to Trenton, New Jersey, for a ceremony to turn his body into ashes. Morse was the only photographer at the ceremony, but the magazine's editor decided not to share the story because Einstein's son, Hans, asked them not to. Chapter 14 Einstein's Brain After Einstein passed away, a doctor named Thomas Stoltz Harvey did an autopsy and took out Einstein's brain without asking his family first. He did this because he wanted scientists to study it later. Einstein, 
while he was alive, did let scientists study his brain. And one book about his life mentioned that he wanted researchers to look at his brain after he died. Now, Einstein's brain is kept at the Princeton University Medical Center. Just like he wanted, the rest of his body was turned into ashes, and those ashes were placed somewhere secret. In 1999, scientists in Canada who were looking at Einstein's brain discovered something interesting. They found a part of his brain, called the inferior parietal lobe, which helps us understand space, see things in 3D, and solve math problems, was bigger by 15% compared to people with average intelligence. The New York Times reported that this might be one reason why Einstein was so smart. In 2011, a museum in Philadelphia called the Mütter Museum got some very thin pieces of Einstein's brain from Dr. Lucy Rourke Adams, who worked at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. She got these pieces from Harvey, the doctor who first took Einstein's brain. The museum decided to show these brain pieces to people who visit. Chapter 15 Einstein in Books and Movies, Oppenheimer and More Since Einstein passed away, many books have been written about him. Some famous ones include Einstein, His Life and Universe by Walter Isaacson and Einstein, A Biography by Jürgen Neff, both published in 2007. You can also find books with Einstein's own thoughts, like The World as I See It. Einstein has been a character in movies, too. In the 1985 movie Insignificance, Michael Emil plays a character called The Professor, who is a lot like Einstein. This movie imagines a meeting between Einstein, Marilyn Monroe, Joe DiMaggio, and Joseph McCarthy in a hotel in New York City. Walter Matthau acted as Einstein in a funny movie called IQ from 1994, in it, he tries to help his niece, played by Meg Ryan, find love. There are also two comedies, I Killed Einstein, Gentleman, from 1970, and Young Einstein from 1988, where Einstein is a character. A more true-to-life story of Einstein was shown in 2017. The TV show Genius by National Geographic had a season about Einstein's life. Johnny Flynn played Einstein when he was younger, and Jeffrey Rush played him as an older man who had left Germany. Ron Howard directed this series. In the 2023 movie Oppenheimer, directed by Christopher Nolan, Tom Conti plays Einstein. This movie stars Cillian Murphy as the scientist J. Robert Oppenheimer and talks about his work on the Manhattan Project. And our video is finished. I hope you found it helpful for your journey in learning English. If you enjoyed it and want to discover more, please hit the subscribe button below to support us. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye, and I look forward to seeing you in future videos.